In today's video, I'm uncovering a hidden gem that many video editors might not even know exists. But chances are you've seen it before but didn't realize how to create it yourself. I'll show you how to take those plain, boring shape layers and turn them into stunning, eye-catching visuals using the magic of layer styles. So if you're ready to level up your editing game, let's dive in. Okay, so first thing after we have created our composition, let's go up here and click on the rectangle tool and hold on to it. Choose a lips tool. And now let's draw a circle by holding shift. Let's center it right Right here and now i'm thinking about adding some gradient to it i'm sure many of you have heard of the effect called gradient ramp if we use that effect we can see how we can add a gradient to our shape but the problem with this is that once we start moving our shape we can see that the start and end ramp points stay where they are in other words they stick to the world space instead of attaching themselves to an object so if you wanted to animate this object you would run into problems because again these gradient points don't stick to the object but to the world space so let's delete the gradient ramp we're going to set Enter the object once again and I'm gonna use something that we've mentioned at the beginning of the video which is called layer styles so if we right click on the shape layer and chose layer styles right here we would see that it has all of these different options right here including the gradient overlay so let's click on it and the greatest thing about using this option is if we now wanted to move the object we can see that the gradient sticks to the shape rather than the world space and that is always what we want to go for if we're animating so let's open this gradient overlay menu and here you can see a bunch of settings you can play with for example instead of a linear gradient you can choose all of these other options that are available so for example we can choose the radial gradient but one that i like the most is the reflected one we can also play around with the angle right here you can basically do anything that you want to make your desired shape now i'm gonna edit the colors by clicking on this edit gradient here for this color stop i want to choose some kind of a pinkish color let's make it a bit more subtle like this and for this one i'm thinking some kind of a darker purple would look nice once we're happy with how it looks we can now click ok you can always come back to this and change this later on but now i want to go on and explore some more layer styles so let's close this gradient overlay menu right click on the shape layer again go to layer styles and i'm thinking about adding some inner glow to our shape so let's open the inner glow menu we can crank up the size here also play around with the range value so it looks a little bit more subtle you can also tweak the opacity settings right here i'm gonna leave it at default 75 percent and now i'd like to change its color i want to go for some darker shade of white so it doesn't pop that much but looks much more subtle kind of like the circle had some frosted edges so i'm gonna click ok now if you look at it we can see it looks much better than it used to there's plenty of things we can change to make it look even better so right click again go to layer styles and now i'm thinking we could add some outer glow let's open the outer glow settings these settings pretty much look all the same once you play with them a little you're gonna get the hang of it you can check out all of these settings yourself and find out what looks best in your case so i'm definitely gonna crank up the size here crank up the range a little too and i want to change its color i'm thinking about choosing some kind of very very light pinkish i think this looks really good so i'm gonna leave it at this and click ok if you think this is too much glow for you you can always play around with the opacity settings and turn it down a little and for now i'm done with the outer glow settings here you can also add noise to it but i always prefer adding noise through adjustment layers than through the layer styles so i'm gonna leave that for later now that i'm done with the outer glow i'm gonna close this menu and i'm gonna show you an option inside layer styles that i think makes it look 10 times better but before that i want to add some gradient background so let's right click new solid the color here doesn't matter so click ok let's drag it under our shape layer i'm gonna search for the effect called gradient ramp the reason why i'm using gradient ramp now is because our background is gonna remain stationary so i'm gonna choose a radial ramp right here i'm gonna type 450 in this box right here and i'm gonna make sure i swap the colors now i'm gonna crank up the second value of the end of ramp option so it gives this subtle feel to our background I'm gonna go ahead and click on this white color right here and I'm gonna change it to something very very light pink and I'm also gonna click on this end color and I'm just gonna make sure it's a bit lighter shade of black here and there we have our background now it is time for me to show you the effect I was telling you about so let's right click on our shape layer again go to layer styles and choose this bevel and emboss effect right here let's open its menu down here and then again right here we can see a lot of various options that we can use but the one that does the trick for me is this one so let's crank up the size to its maximum value and right there you're gonna notice that our circle even though it is still a two-dimensional object looks like a sphere you might like it you might not like it but i personally think this makes it look 10 times better you can also play around with the rest of the settings perhaps change the 
angle right here or maybe play around with the altitude but all of this is up to you i don't really like to mess with any of the other settings right here i simply like to put size and soften to its maximum values and also decrease the depth to about 50 percent and that's it for the bevel settings now we're gonna close this menu and now the only thing i want to change about the sphere is the gradient overlay so we're gonna open that up go into gradient settings i want to change up the left color stop to a bit more reddish color something like this and the right one to a bit more lighter shade of purple something like this i think this looks nice when you're done click ok and that's it and i'm thinking at the end we could try to do some animation with this for example transform this sphere to a cube as it's moving i think that would look really cool so let's do that first i'm gonna add a new adjustment layer so right click new adjustment layer here i'm gonna search for the noise effect and apply it to the layer and then let's crank it up to about 12 percent i think it adds a cool vibe to the scene now let's animate this sphere first let's pre-compose our shape layer right click on it pre-compose and call it circle click ok and now let's click on this pre-composition press p for position set a keyframe go a bit further now perhaps move it to the left like this let's select the keyframes and press f9 to easy ease them open up the graph editor select the keyframes again and perhaps make some kind of a right peak i think this looks good now so let's go further with the playhead again and set another keyframe let's move it to the other side of the screen now select these two keyframes go to the graph editor and make a right peak again okay so when we play it i think this motion is a bit too fast so i'm gonna spread this keyframe out a little and now i'm thinking we should add another keyframe animate this sphere to the other side and while it's moving to the other side we can transform it into a cube so let's move it to the other side again again select the keyframes and tweak up the graph a little let's make the same right peak again and if we now add motion blur to our circle and play the video we're gonna see how it became much much smoother okay so now let's transform this sphere to a cube so get into the pre-composition go up and hold this ellipse tool choose the rectangle and let's draw a shape while holding shift we're gonna have to make it approximately the same size as this sphere let's center it we're gonna scale it up a little and i think this looks good enough so now we're gonna click on the shape one which is the sphere open the settings click on the layer styles Control c to copy them and i'll just paste it onto our rectangle now we can see that it has the same design as this sphere and that's ideally what we want to go for now let's go back to our main comp and we ideally want to make the switch close to the peak of its velocity so somewhere around here so now without moving the playhead let's go back to our circle composition and drag this shape layer to the beginning of it then let's click on our first shape layer press Control shift d and now delete this one and now if we go back to our main comp we're gonna see how it switches from a sphere to a cube but we could definitely make this transition 10 times better so let's click on our first shape layer which is the sphere hit r for rotation set a keyframe go to the end and set the rotation to around 180 degrees let's first drag this keyframe to about here select them easy ease them and now make a right peak like this and now we're going to repeat the same for our cube so hit r for rotation set a keyframe go a bit further set it around 180 degrees again select them easy ease them and now make a left peak actually i want to switch up the keyframes a bit i want to give each keyframe a mid peak something like this i think this is gonna hit the vibe much better now since we played around with the keyframes we want to find the highest point here and then go back to our pre-composition and now change the switching point again so now to make the transition much more seamless we're going to be adding some more effects to our adjustment layer the next one i want to add is called echo first i want to switch up a few options for example this decay to about 0.4 and definitely change this option to maximum and now when we play the video we're going to see how it echoes a bit kind of like it's leaving some trail behind it let's call this adjustment layer noise and echo so we know what's going on i'm also thinking about adding another adjustment layer this one we're gonna call forced motion blur and now i'm gonna cut the edges to this layer so it is only present to when the transition is about to happen of course we first gotta add the cc force motion blur to it it is a very render heavy effect so pay attention to that i'd like to change the shutter angle to about 90 and now let's duplicate this force motion blur effect delete the motion blur and we're gonna call this shake so i'm gonna search for wiggle effect choose wiggle position and i'm gonna set the wiggle speed to about five and the wiggle amount to about 100 we can always play around with that later on we can see that our background gets kind of out of place so we're gonna select it press s for scale and scale it up a bit and now let's set keyframes to wiggle amount and wiggle speed press u to see all the keyframes go a bit back and set these values to zero now I'll go a bit further copy these two keyframes and paste them over we can now select them in easy ease them i actually decided to change the wiggle speed to two and the wiggle amount to 50 because what we've had before was a bit too much so let me explain this a little these middle keyframes right here are at the exact position where our two layers are transforming 
so I have decided to shake everything up a little right exactly when this sphere is becoming a cube to give the transition that shake feel like something happened. And on top of everything, I'd like to top it off with some directional blur. So select this adjustment layer. You can also search for the effects right here. For example, directional blur and just drag it onto your layer. This thing that I'm using is a free plugin. It is called FX Console and I would really recommend it because it speeds up your workflow by a lot. So now that we have our directional blur added, we can simply keep frame it the same way we keyframe wiggle so let's set the blur direction to about 50 degrees this is really your personal preference now go to the first keyframes set a keyframe for blur length go to the middle turn it up to about 30 ish now go to the end and set it back to zero now select these keyframes easy ease them and now when we play the video we're gonna see how the transition looks much more seamless and at the very end i like to add the effect called exposure so we're basically gonna make the whole screen flash a bit when the transition is happening so let's keyframe exposure get to the middle keyframe set it to around 0.35 go to the end and set it back to zero again select the keyframes easy ease so that wraps up the animation i hope you picked up something new along the way let me know in the comments if you found this video helpful or if there's something you'd like me to cover next don't forget to hit subscribe for more and i'll catch you in the next video